Welcome to the Biblical Languages Podcast, brought to you by Biblingo. My name is Nick Mesmer, and I'm one of the co-hosts of the podcast. In this episode, I interview a biblical language learner and Biblingo user, Alan Cossey, about his experience learning the languages. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Mesmer, and I'm your host for this episode. I'm here with Alan Cossey. How are you doing, Alan? I'm fine, thanks. I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good. Um, so Alan has been a part of the Biblingo community for quite a long time now. I think around two years at this point. Does mm. that sound right? That sounds right. Pretty much the start, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited to have Alan on to talk a little bit, uh, not just about his experience with Biblingo, but his experience learning the biblical languages uh, as a whole to give us some tips and encouragement and, and all that kind of stuff. So before we dive into that, Alan, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yep. Uh, I'm from, Eng- from England. I'm 64, married, three grown-up kids. They've now flown the nest. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm part of the Church of England. I'm actually what's called a, a licensed lay minister, LLM for short. The old name was Reader, but that confused people even mm-hmm. more than the new name. <laughs> uh, at least people know they don't know what it means now. Right. Uh, I, that, that means I get to preach and lead services a couple of times a month, lead a couple of home groups, uh, that sort of thing. Right. Awesome. Um, so with that, uh, would, would just love to know why did you uh, decide to start learning the biblical languages? Was it for, you know, ministry purposes or, or something else? What motivated you originally? Well, I started my LLM training back in 2010 and in, that was three years part time. And in the third year, we had a half day taster of mm-hmm. learning biblical Greek. Um, and I, my background is science a long while ago, so I knew all the Greek characters, so it was quite, quite easy, easy to actually read it, even though I didn't know what they meant. Right. Um, and, and I quite enjoyed that. So uh, I bought a book um, and learned a bit and thought, oh, I'll try, try the Hebrew as well. Now, that was more difficult. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I sort of plodded on and did bits and pieces over those few years. And I got to the point where I was really struggling to remember any new words. Mm-hmm. And, like stuff was going in my head and pushing other stuff out. And I, I couldn't remember. I got some flashcards and just sort of came to grinding halt. And I mm-hmm. can't remember where I saw it, but there was an advert for Biblink was starting up. So, so I thought I'd try it. And it's been really good for me. I have actually remembered lots of stuff. Been yeah. Really good. Good, good. So yeah. actually, so, so in terms <clears throat> of use of it, uh, I'd spend too much time on the internet. I work for myself, so mm-hmm. I get distracted into discussing things with people on the internet on Facebook pages. <laughs> and some, sometimes meanings of words come up. But mm-hmm. I think that but it also does come in handy for some things in, in preaching. Not not a huge amount, but uh, it's good to know a bit more than you can get from commentaries. Uh, but for me, well, that was why I started, but I found other reasons for continuing. It's, it's made the, the scriptures come alive more for me. That's yeah. I wasn't expecting that really, but it has. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I love to hear stories of people who do kind of self-study Greek and Hebrew because it's a hard thing to do, um, n- not in the context of seminary or a classroom or something like that. So to me, it's just always exciting to to meet people who who. Um, have put in the work to, to do it on their own. Um, so yeah, just, just encouraging to hear that. So <clears throat> I'd love to hear a little bit more just about your journey and what it's looked like. You started with that. Um, you, I think you called it a taster course for Greek. Yeah. yeah just to um, and then you uh, <clears throat> worked through a book, you, you started Hebrew, um, all that kind of stuff. So at this point, so you started at this point about 12 years ago. Is that right? Yeah. I think you said 2010. Yeah. Uh, 10, 10, 10, nine, 10 years ago. Nine, 10 years ago. Yeah. Right. That, that, the, the Greek stuff. Yeah. Um, so what, um, how, how did that journey kind of develop over time, um, kind of in the early stages versus the later stages? What did kind of the day-to-day look like for you? Yeah, the, the, two, the two books, the Greek one was fairly easy to read and pick up. And I got bits and pieces. But then I, I'm concentrating on Hebrew now, but initially I was 
uh, doing the Greek. And I sort of fell into a bit of a trap of reading into linears quite mm-hmm. a bit. So I could understand, I could understand why Greek words are in a certain way, but I didn't learn very much by that. I wasn't disciplined enough to, to get to the Greek text on its own. Right. Um, but the, and the Hebrew one was similar, but I um, paid for uh, Zondervan Master Lectures. Mm-hmm. There's a, a course there on biblical Hebrew, which I went through and bought the the book as well, which which was great. But again, not that much stuck. I, that's great as a as a reference book, grammar book. Mm-hmm. So I sort of fiddled around for quite a while and didn't get very far. Yeah. Uh, just looking things up. It made a bit more sense than, than beforehand, but I wouldn't say I was sort of learning very much, really. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't want to sound like I'm a really sort of great big fan of uh, bibbling and you're being bibbling when you're paying me vast sums or anything. <laughs> but, I <found laughs> it, <laughs> but I really have found it a, a really big help for me over the last couple of years. I've come on quite a long way with that. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Um, and in a lot of ways, I mean, there's there's all sorts of applications of Bib- like ways to use Biblingo. But in a lot of ways, the person we have in mind is is the person who is looking to self study, is kind of on their own. Um, and there's there's just so many resources out there, and a lot of them are great. Most of them are great for particular th- at parts of the learning process, but not all of it. And so, yeah, we 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 hope that one Biblingo offers a unique methodology that kind of connects with uh, a broader um, array of people and learning styles, but also our our goal for it is to kind of be one place to go to get all the sort of engagement you need with the languages. But um, yeah, we can talk more about that. So so with that, I would love to hear more about your um, experience with Biblingo, the role that it's played in your journey. So you mentioned getting started with it. Um, what did that look like getting started? How did you use it? Um, and kind of what did you see in terms of the payoff uh, in, in the beginning using Biblingo? Right. Well, I, as I think I said, I work from home. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I was able to spend a fair bit of time on here because there's no one breathing down my neck uh, mm-hmm. apart from customers. Yeah, I will. I, I'll actually say it's so funny because it, it was so early on. I actually, this has stuck in my memory. I, I remember getting a message from you and you said that um, you're enjoying Biblingo, and, but uh, you really should be working more, but you're having so much fun. And it just meant so much to us to hear someone say the program was fun in those early stages because that, that's a big part of what we're trying to do. My wife doesn't understand this. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't understand that. Yeah, How I can yeah. find learning Hebrew as fun. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah, sort of absolutely. looks at me a bit strange sometimes. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do find it fun and i think mm-hmm. the because there's a, a variety of ways of learning within it i'm quite a visual learner and what what's the term kinesthetic i think that's doing right. stuff i think that's, yeah. it sounds yeah. good anyway right yeah uh, <laughs> yeah so there's those are two things that, that help me the way i'm learning so uh, you know i can see the pictures on on the lessons there's the videos there's the there's the cards with pictures on so that that alan likes pictures and actually the the, the discipline of actually typing out in the lessons mm-hmm. because maybe I'm the only lazy person in the world, but when I read other books, if I read books and there's an exercise, I tend not to do it. I just want to get mm-hmm. on to the next chapter. Yeah. But you, but you make us go through the lessons. You make yeah. us do that. And that's, that's really good for people like me, the lazy lot. Yeah. Good. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, just sticks it in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's a great point because when you first read something, maybe in a textbook or whatever else, you'll feel like you understood it initially because you had you just read it, and so you're like, "Well, I don't need to practice it because I feel like I understood it." Um, but that's just not how learning a language works. You need to actually immediately start getting those repetitions with it and um, and uh, engaging with it more deeply through things like speaking or writing or, or whatever else. Um, but it's kind of yeah, it's kind of a a um, yeah. You you just you you don't realize that it hasn't sunk in as much as it needs to because you feel like it clicked. Um, so making sure you do those exercises right away is is really important. So that's good. So I think I I've never re- really actually timed this, but I think I spend about thirty minutes a day 
usually at the start of the day, uh, when my mind is fairly fresh and customers haven't started ringing me up. Uh Uh, So what I normally do is I go through words that need practice. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's that's my my first thing. And then Mm -hmm. if I've got some time or make the time, I'll I'll do some new words. Mm -hmm. But uh, these days, um, the, the, the actual lessons... I tend to only do if I've got like I know I've got thirty minutes spare. At, mm-hmm. at the start, I sort of, I pa- I piled through the, the lessons. If you look at my stats, it's this huge big yeah. on peak on the graph at the start. So I've got down to more of a, a pattern that I, that I know I can actually maintain. Mm-hmm. For me, it's getting in, getting into a rhythm of things like going on going on a diet. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get in there, get in there, and get get started know you can maintain it and and that's how it's worked for me it's been been good yeah yeah that's fantastic actually um a a big thing we like to emphasize is the importance of review and review kind of a lot of people approach it the opposite way i'm going to start with new stuff and if i have time i'll review other things um but starting right and and really yeah i mean review should actually take up a pretty large percentage of the time you're spending in the languages and you you know you think about it it it, it makes sense it might feel very productive to continue pressing on and learning new things but if you're forgetting those things you're actually not being all that productive um i don't know if you have seen this but we we have a video um that i made it's called my daily biblingo routine and it's actually what i do um you know mostly on a daily basis with biblingo and it actually it mirrors a lot, kind of what you've said where you start off with review so you do the words that need practice as well as the paradigms that need practice um and then depending on how much time you have you might do some more review uh with the reading comprehension drills the stories but then if you have maybe another 20 to 30 minutes you do a new lesson so it actually is very close to what you've said is is what we recommend so so that's great um and, and yeah, just the 30 minutes a day, if you can carve that out every day, you just make tremendous progress. And again, the program's kind of built to be able to do things in 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minute segments, depending on which exercise you're doing. So that's fantastic. Um, one, one of the things I did want to um, talk about with that is you've been, like we said, using Biblingo for maybe almost two years now. And um, I can actually see from my end, you have um, over like 1,300 sessions in Biblingo, um, which I think comes out averages a little over almost like two sessions a day on average, um, which, which uh, so a couple of things with that. One is um, that 30 minutes a day, has that been pretty consistently, like almost every single day? Um, and then number two, is I, I think a lot of people don't realize that Biblingo is a bit more than just like an online course for Greek and Hebrew because typically if you have an online course, you're not going to use that for two years and 1,300 sessions. So I guess the second, the follow-up question is what are, like, what are you doing, you know, on Biblingo 1,300 times um, that is continuing to be productive for you, if that makes sense? Yep. Um, yeah, the two sessions a day sounds about right. Usually, mm-hmm. I think the main one is when I first get on here in the morning. Yeah. But if I have my lunch, I may well do some a bit yeah. or in the afternoon, something like that. But yeah, there's very nearly always something in the morning. So right. there, there's a something on the on the dashboard about how long a, a stretch or you've done. Yeah. So that's quite high on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Sorry, what was, what was the next question? <laughs> I've forgotten. Just what, what do you, what, what have you, um, how have you found Biblingo to continue to be productive for you over two years and 1300 sessions? Um, what, what is it that kind of keeps you signing in every day? Right. Well, it might be a bit sad, really, but I, I, I do enjoy the, 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 the reviewing of stuff and seeing that mm-hmm. I can actually remember some stuff. But mm-hmm. now that I, uh, I'm trying to, do some of the the Bible reading both in the in the app itself and elsewhere. And so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm working through Genesis at present. So I'm on chapter 24, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm actually finding that I can f- actually rem- remember most of the stuff in there. But because yeah. before that was always looking at looking up the words, always. There's still quite a lot that I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I'm something like 50, 60 percent, something like that um, of that tells me I, I've 
done those words. So there's still mm. a significant number of words to go, but it's getting easier and it's sinking in a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's it's being productive in the actual reading. Right. I, I find I find with Hebrew going back a few years um, that I twigged. I got on okay with the Greek fairly easily. No, I mean, I, I didn't know the words, but I could understand I could understand the syntax, that sort of stuff. But with mm-hmm. Hebrew, I found it um, more difficult to start to get to where I felt I was actually getting stuff out of it, get learning from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where Biblingo has really kicked in for me. Yeah. It's helped me to do that much, much more successfully. Yeah, yeah, great. That's great. Um, one more quick question about Biblingo is just how, how have you found it to be unique from other resources? So like you mentioned, um, your Greek and Hebrew studies really predated uh, using Biblingo and you were able to use other sorts of resources and you just mentioned you're even using other resources now. Uh, but what is it about Biblingo that's that's unique from those? Well, I think the, the main one is the ability to choose to do however much I want. Mm-hmm. I, I'm fairly consistent how, how much time I spend particularly in the mornings. But say if um, if I go to, if you try some videos online elsewhere, mm-hmm. you know, they might be an hour long. Mm-hmm. And it, if you, if you do half an hour and you come back and you can't remember where you were, this might, and this might be, uh, this is a fairly, might be a fairly small thing, but it's quite useful for me in that when you have the, the vocabulary, you have the choice of biblical pronunciation or mm-hmm. modern. Yeah. And I've stuck with biblical because you can get more of a distinction between your, your hit, hits and yeah, coughs, coughs and tits and tires and so on. Um, yeah, that that is quite handy to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that that's been good, and also the the flashcards you can do a, do a number that you you like, and then come back later on and gradually build up. That's, I think it's the flexibility of it. Yeah, that's been the, the main thing for me. Yeah, yeah. and that yeah. actually to see and to see your progress as well. Because when I was doing my my flashcards before, you know, I'd have a pile of these things, and and I couldn't really tell how many I how many right. I'd learned properly. Right. Whereas with Biblingo, it's it's much more visible. Yeah, the progress. Yeah, yeah that's great, and uh, some something that's really important. There's. A number of things, but two of the main uh, predictors for uh, what some people call language maintenance, just meaning like two predictors for um, someone keeping up with languages over the long term are um, use and motivation. So the more opportunities you have to use the language, the more likely you will be to stick it out for the long run um, and the more motivated you are. Uh, which those two things are pretty intuitive. But again, that, that's really how we've built Biblingo for in terms of use. If you if there's something you can do productively for five minutes, that's going to give you more opportunity to use the languages uh, or 15 or 30 or whatever else. Um, and then the motivation, like you said, seeing your progress is, is very motivating. And just um, things being more interconnected, like you mentioned, you can see the percentage of words that you know in each chapter of Genesis as you read, which seeing that percentage go up can be pretty motivating as well as you also feel it um, getting easier to read. So that's great. Um, I also prefer, yeah, for Hebrew, I use the biblical pronunciation. Um, and for the same reason in Greek, I use the early high koine. Just the, both of them distinguish between uh, the sounds of letters more than the other pronunciations, which I, which I find really helpful as well. So great. So just a few... Uh, I have a few kind of rapid fire questions for you that I'll, I'll ask and you can just throw out some of the first things that come to mind. And this is just really to help anyone who's listening that's maybe wanting to learn the languages or just got started or maybe they're, you know, years and years into the process, but um, need some motivation. So what would you say has been the most helpful thing for learning the biblical languages? Uh, for me, doing it a small amount each day rather than once a week, a big, a big dollop. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was, I, might, I didn't do, I didn't do Hebrew or, or Greek at school. I did do Latin. That was a yeah. modern language then really. That's so far back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and French. Um, yeah. But again, there we were recommended to do a little lots 
you know, regular, frequently rather than big amounts. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly, particularly not trying to cram in um, doing a lot before your exams, you know, yeah. do, do it properly. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that flexibility and being able to, to fit it to what I need, that's mm-hmm. been such a big help. Yeah, and really for, for people listening, if, if there's one thing that I, I would love to highlight about your story um, and for people to take away, it's that. Because I, I think people know that and it's said a lot that it's better to do it daily, but people really struggle to do that. And I think a lot of it is the resources out there just aren't built for that. But um, I just think for your example of, you know, at least just looking at the past two years of 30 minutes one to two sessions every single day for the most part for two years is such a, a great example of the way that language is supposed to be learned. And so, um, and yeah, so, so if, if people take away anything, I think that's a, a great encouragement for people to, that it's, it's doable, it's achievable to, to do 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day for, for two years. <laughs> um, and, and, and it might feel slow, but I'm sure you can look back to two years ago and, just see that you've you've come quite a long way so how has the journey been rewarding but one of the things that, that surprised me i was re- reading yeah you know, uh, genesis 24 or something on that and what what stopped me doing that that's the the chapter i mean is the chapter where there's abraham and sarah and sarah has died mm-hmm. and the, the, the chapter is about abraham trying to find somewhere to bury his wife in this foreign land. Now, mm. normally, if I was reading that English, I'd just read it through and that, okay, I've gone past that and I'll get onto meteor stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but here, I'm, because it, I'm forced to slow down, mm-hmm. and there's Abraham, this really important fellow who's come all the way across and he's doing great things for God, making some mistakes and so on, but God's using him. And then there's, there's this very human Abraham who's lost his wife mm-hmm. and he's having to barter for somewhere, trying to find somewhere to, to bury his wife. Mm-hmm. And I'd never gone through that chapter slowly before. And having to do the reading in Hebrew slowly has slowed me down and it's the meaning it, it is sort of sinking in. Uh, no, I, burial of Abraham is not a, a huge thing. You probably wouldn't do much preaching on that, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But it's that's got me into into the scriptures more. Mm-hmm. They're, they're sort of sinking in. Yeah. I, I'm not I'm not a very emotional person, even though I'm waving my hands around a bit. <laughs> but but it's re- that really hit me a, a couple of weeks ago when I when I was doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that that's such an important aspect of learning the original languages i I think we often i've said this before but we often think of learning greek and hebrew the payoff being these deep theological insights or there being some kind of information in the text that we're not getting in english and those things can be true but i think such an important part of it is being moved by the text in in a unique way um i mean the biblical text is is literature and literature the the authors don't just give us information but they package that information in a particular way um, for particular reasons and a lot of those reasons are not just to provide the information but to help us be moved by the information um, and not that you can't be moved by by biblical in uh, English or native language translation but but you absolutely miss out on the unique ways that the author originally packaged that information to move you. So, um, yeah, I, I, I often think about it like, you know, watching a movie versus reading the, the movie script, you know, like you're, you're just not going to be moved or, or reading like a, a movie review. Like you're not going to be moved in the same way as, as watching the movie because the movie was constructed in, in a particular way uh, in order to move you. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you shared that example. Um. So what have been some of the biggest challenges for learning the biblical languages? Early on with Hebrew, that was a bit of a grind. Mm-hmm. Whereas with, with Greek, bits seemed to make sense early on. Hebrew, 10 years ago, whatever, was a bit of a grind before it start, not, didn't exactly click. There was no click moment, but things started to make more sense after a while. That, there was like a, uh, a hump to get over with mm-hmm. Hebrew. Um, 
now actually part of the problem is is being tempted to spend too much time on it <laughs> yeah and i should i should really be working <laughs> yep that's a good uh, it, so from my perspective good. a good problem to have <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's that, great that's those are the two the two things that spring to mind yep yeah absolutely um how do you stay motivated well i enjoy i enjoy learning it Right. I, I, I do have the the motivation that I I do I do preach a couple of mm -hmm. times a, a month, and it, it's not every week by a long way that any of this comes up. But sometimes there are insights. I mean, when I um, if I'm preparing a sermon, <clears throat> I I have a, like a checklist of stuff from back from my LLM training days. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those is to look at the passage. Look, read it through in two, three, four different translations, see if there's anything major different. But I now read them through in the original language because sometimes things pop up mm -hmm. uh, and you think, well, why have they put it a particular way? Sometimes the translation, well, can't, translations can't catch everything, can they, from when you're translating from one language to another. So some, right. occasionally things, things pop up there and, and it has been a help with that as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that, that's a, yeah. I, I want to. I want to preach well. Right. I, I want to preach the pe the people in the congregation. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And I th I think that's a a good way to think about um, Greek and Hebrew. I I just think uh, is for the purposes of preaching specifically. I think um, yeah, a lot of people think of the using Greek and Hebrew for preparing a sermon or something is you got to break open all the commentaries and you got to open your Bible software and you got to do all the word studies and the sentence diagramming and all these things, you know, to, to use to construct your sermon. But if you can read the text that you're preaching on in a couple minutes, you know, maybe a little slower than you can read it in English. I mean, at the very least, like you said, it's going to alert you to things that maybe then then you want to break open a commentary or look at a little close more closely. Um, but I just think reading, being able to read fluently in the original languages versus analyzing deeply, there's a place for that, of course. But being able to read fluently, I think, is so useful um, because it doesn't take very much time and it, it kind of helps you see... Um, maybe where you want to spend more time thinking through the text. So, yeah, you 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 need to know and understand and feel the text more than you can actually get across in your sermon because yeah, you might spend what well, seems to take me all day to to, to do a sermon, but right. preaching is is twenty minutes, something like that. Right. Um, but I but I find that I'm learning a huge amount as part of my preparation. Even, even if I can't get it across to the congregation, right, even if they right. don't understand what I'm talking about, at least I've learned from from my right. from my sermon, and this is right. a big part of it. Yeah, well, if you think about if you you know if you were preaching on that chapter from Genesis, um, you might not mention anything about the Hebrew in your sermon, but if you if you stand before your congregation moved by the text as you preach because of the way that you read it in Hebrew, I mean that's a huge payoff for having done it. Uh, in the original languages, even if even if no one in the congregation knows you read it in Hebrew, right? If they can see see that emotion in the way that you, I think it's important not to sort of say as I was reading this in Hebrew, right? Look, exactly. Look, look at me. <laughs> don't, uh, I don't think it, that's yeah. that's right. So I, I rarely uh, point out some, something like that unless I have yeah. to. Really, so yeah, yeah, it's not an eagle trip. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So last question for you, and you know, it can be from what maybe what you've already said before or something else, but uh, just for our listeners, again, we have listeners who maybe haven't even started learning the biblical languages all the way to people who have been studying them for years and years, but do you have any final words of encouragement for any biblical language learners out there? I'd say give it a, a good shot, put your heart and soul into it don't give up because there will be you will get a lot out of it, it mm -hmm. does take some effort you, unless you're a, a natural or a seven year old who, who just absorbs this stuff straight off mm -hmm. it may take time i'm 64 um so things are taking a bit longer to to sink in these mm -hmm. days but i found it so so rewarding 
both on a personal level and making me a, a hopefully a bit more effective as a, as a preacher. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's all we have time for on this episode of the Biblical Languages Podcast brought to you by Biblingo. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>